Hey Earthlings, welcome back and uh, welcome to the final part of this three-parter. This is a review of um, the move from vegetarianism to veganism within the animal movement. You could say the struggle to create veganism as the moral baseline, uh, if you like. In part one, we looked at how some groups were very reluctant to adopt the V word, they were wary of it, and when they did use it, it would often be the case that veganism was presented as merely a diet. Now, sadly, that is still the case in many quarters, so we'll come on uh, to that, but it's something that still needs to be addressed uh, in our movement. So rarely was the philosophy of veganism discussed or explained. It's only really been the 21st century, this century now, where veganism has come to the fore, but it's still not plain sailing for the V word. There's still things to do, as we'll see. So in part two, I express my sadness that the vegetarian concept of carnism has been so popular within the vegan movement. In fact, it's so popular, you could say that this vegetarian idea has captured the heart of vegans for some uh, reason. Melanie Joy, the person who coined the word carnism, describes it as merely a subset of speciesism in the same way that anti-Semitism is a subset of racism. And so therefore it is quite misleading to describe carnism as being the opposite of veganism. In fact, the opposite of veganism is speciesism and human supremacism. I tend to think that having this vegetarian concept so prominent in the movement as it moves towards veganism is rather a dangerous thing. For example, if a ve vegan curious person is searching around the internet trying to dip their toe into veganism and they come across carnism, then they're going to end up with Dr. Melanie Joy and her husband, Sebastian, and also Tobias Leonard. They all work for Pro-Veg. Tobias Leonard goes under the title of the vegan um, strategist. If our vegan curious person does end up here, what's the kind of thing that they're going to learn? So this is quite disturbing from a vegan point of view. Again, we've still got modern claims that veganism is merely a diet, something that veganism has not been able to shake free of in terms of um, its ideological representation, although it's completely false. There's also ideas that we should be rather political about things. Don't necessarily tell people that we're vegans, that veganism is the end game, etc., etc. Leonard suggests that um, some people say we should always be open about what we're doing. It should be clear that veganism is the end goal, but the vegan strategist does not understand that. And then you get claims like this. Someone who eats fishes and sometimes a cookie with an egg in it is still a vegan in my eyes. So we've got this rewriting of veganism uh, going on. Now these views are pretty similar to the views of Peter Singer, who since the 1970s has argued against rights-based animal rights. He's always been an opponent of rights-based animal rights. And Singer wrote the foreword to Leonard's book. So we see then that even now, veganism is regularly presented as a diet about food. And moreover, the radical views and the expansive values of the people who started the vegan social movement are often ignored in the modern vegan movement or even ridiculed as the movement seems to slide and dissolve into some form of animal welfare. The movement is moderating fast and it should be a worry to us in my view. Influencers, for example, like Earthling Ed, he's not particularly comfortable with the tougher version of veganism as presented by the pioneers of our movement. And so he says that he's happier 
to redefine veganism to mean something like efforts to reduce animal suffering, which is exactly the same message as the RSPCA. So we have a situation where at the moment in the movement, the word cruelty is absolutely dominant. It's the main word that we use in our claims making, meaning that the movement's current language largely mirrors that of the traditional animal welfare organizations. Again, like the RSPCA, there's kind of almost like no differentiation between animal rights and animal welfare anymore. They seem to have merged into a new version of new welfareism. So on language, the current movement seems to be rather confused. We're in a bit of a mess, uh, really. The strategy seems to be that we're going to use words, welfare words like cruelty and abuse, and we're going to stick the label veganism onto the end of it and see if that works, see if people connect the dots. Culturally, there's no reason why they should. Finally, another worry, for me at least, is the fact that ProVeg are now funding vegan-friendly or vegan conferences, which means that Tobias Leonhardt gets to give the keynote speech at these conferences that have been financially supported by ProVeg. This is an ex example from only a few months ago uh, in the University of Kent. Okay, so we've got a vegan conference, right? And at the very end of it, we're treated to a speech which suggests that we can use our fellow animals. We can use them for their wool and for their milk and for their um, eggs, for example, in some kind of alleged symbiotic relationship. This is the new thing that the vegan strategist is pushing. Now, this is very worrying that in the 21st century, the vegan ideas, vegan values, have still not been able to break free from animal welfareism. And we've not been able to really kind of forge for ourselves uh, a true identity, which is to do with liberation and anti-exploitation, anti-oppression. You know, these stronger words that the pioneers of our movement used, you know, currently we're a little bit frightened of those um, at the moment. It's kind of really sad, it seems to me. The question I ask myself is, if I can live in a way that reduces animal suffering, why wouldn't I? Asking others to be as vegan as possible is also beneficial because it asks for reduction, which people are more receptive to than they are to full veganism. It's a relatively young movement. It's about food. To think that every use is necessarily abuse is, I think, a mistake. I mean, there can be, like I said, a give and take, and that is what I call um, a symbiosis. So we still seem to have some work to do. We're well into the 21st century now, but veganism still struggles to become the moral baseline. Are we going to just moderate and continue moderating and become a new welfare movement, a militant version of the RSPCA, or are we going to recapture the values of animal rights? Seems to me that this is a struggle that still is ongoing. Okay, people, thanks for sticking with me for these uh, three short um, clips, really. And I hope there have been some benefit. And uh, Earthlings, see you again soon.